This is Jay with SureShot Night Vision. We're going to be doing the PVS-14 eyepiece upgrade on the MH25 iRay today. We got a lot of guys asking how to do the swap. Um, we've actually seen people that actually break the body of the MH25, so we're going to show you a proper way to do this today. It's really simple, quick, doesn't take much time. So, here we go. Alright, this is our adapter ring. The machined ring this is the part that's going to go on your eye ray, screws onto the body of it, and this is where your PVS-14 eyepiece screws down. This obviously being the PVS-14 eyepiece. You can't just use any PVS-14 eyepiece here. Um, obviously when you order these they're going to come with both, but you cannot get just the ring and use a PVS-14 eyepiece that you already have because this part right here, you can see it is machined down just a little bit to fit onto the eye ray to where it screws down far enough to get your focus correct. So they have to go together. You can't just buy one of the two. All right, now you're gonna need a can of compressed air and you're gonna need a little pair of channel locks. Channel locks and multi-thousand dollar optics normally don't go together but we're not going to use this anymore. I do not know what you would use it for anymore after this. So if you want to toss it, toss it. If you want to keep it around for a conversation piece, that's up to you. If you scratch it, not a big deal. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, this one has already been swapped. It's already been swapped to the PVS-14 eyepiece. So I do not need a pair of channel locks at this point. But to show you, this part right here this is where your channel locks need to go not here this is obviously how you focus the unit do not try to grab that with your channel locks don't even grab it tightly with your hand and try to turn it and I'm about to show you why but that's the big mistake that people are making they don't know but that can break the body of the MH25 and obviously since you did it and it's not the unit's fault they're probably not going to warranty that so you're going to just take it right here with your channel locks turn it counterclockwise and some of these are tight some of these are really tight uh, they do have thread locker on them from the factory so if you've got to to bear down on it a little bit that's completely normal and the only thing you're going to break by bearing down on that is the thread locker so don't worry about it it like i say if you scratch this no harm no foul try to keep it off of your body of your eye ray of course but you get the point so you're going to rotate this counterclockwise Then you'll get to a point that where your eyepiece starts turning with you. That's okay. Because at that point, it's no longer in the body where it locks on. And that's it. And you can see here, in this eyepiece, there are three flat surfaces on the focus. If you hold it where we grabbed it with our channel locks, you can see when you focus the unit, that rotates. Okay, now there's three flat spots. One being here here and here those three flat spots made up here here and here so if you bear down on this focus you're going to break those not necessarily those it could break the body it could round one of those off anyway it's it's not good you don't want that so definitely be careful and not rotate this part whenever you're trying to tighten or take this off with your channel locks. Now you can throw this at your neighbor, throw it out in the yard, whatever you want to do with it. That's useless to us now. Now take your can of air. Don't do this. We don't, if, if you do that, you'll get stuff all over your output screen and your eye array. Don't want that. Test it, make sure you're not blowing the liquid out. Hold it upright and blow all of your debris. There's gonna be debris and that's gonna be that thread locker. It could be a small piece of the coating, anything like that. If it works its way onto your output screen here, then you're going to start seeing it in your image. You're going to have to take it back apart, clean it. So 
blow it out, make sure you've got it completely clean. Now set it aside. Now this is the adapter, like we talked about. Obviously this part is what's going to screw on to here. So put it on, rotate it counterclockwise until you hear a click. Now that click means that we're, we're flat on our threads, we're not going to cross thread it. Now you can begin turning it clockwise. And you'll get to a point before it bottoms out that it'll start getting a little harder to turn. That's okay. If it's hard immediately, you're cross threaded, don't force it, you'll mess up the threads. That's bad. So if it screws on a couple rounds and then starts getting hard, that's normal. Tighten it on down. You don't have to get this really tight. So once you get a good firm tightness on it, that's all you need. If you notice that it's going on crooked at all, obviously stop. Make sure you got it, you got it going on straight, no cross threading. Okay, now our PVS-14 limbs here. These are going to have a little bit of lithium grease on them. And that's going to keep that, that O-ring right there sliding gently inside of that adapter. So it's not really hard to get your, your diopter set on these. So, just like before, with the body of the MH25, I'm going to spray it out, make sure we're good and clean. Go ahead and hit the body of the eye ray again in case we got any debris in by screwing the adapter on. Now once we've got that clean, same thing here. I'm going on with the eyepiece counterclockwise until I hear a click. Then I'm going to begin to go clockwise. Tighten it up. You'll notice with this eyepiece, you'll go about one or two rounds and then you'll start feeling a little bit of firmness. That's your O-ring engaging the adapter. That's completely fine. It'll get a little bit tighter. Just keep going. until it mates to the adapter. When it does, you don't have to have this thing super tight. Don't try to power through it. There's no need in that. So just get it good snug tightness there and that's done. That's how simple it is. So again, I can't stress the fact enough that you do not want to grab your focus whenever you're taking this off. Even if you wanted to put this back on for whatever reason, do not use that to tighten it down or take it off. That's how people are breaking these and I don't advise powering through anything. If you run into any type of firmness, anything, just stop. It's better to stop, call somebody, uh, call us. We'll try to help you out if we can. But it's not a hard upgrade and that should be a pretty good explanation on how to get these tanks changed over. Like I said, it's a much needed upgrade and that's how we recommend doing it. Thanks.